my video on zoning reports and the problems with zoning reports, I talked a little bit about building setbacks and why building setbacks are a challenge. I wanted to do a separate video just on building setbacks, a short video, and I, I want to answer some questions, uh, some simple questions. What's a building setback? Uh, why do land planners like building setbacks? <laughs> How can building setbacks potentially cause problems? What kind of problems can they cause? And what do you need to do to figure out uh, the location of a, of a building setback on a particular parcel? And what do you need to do to, to find out if you have a building that violates a building setback? And then, you know, why is it not always easy to get a clear answer to the question of where a setback is on a parcel or if a, if a building violates a setback? And I have an example that I'm going to uh, share with you from, from one of our cities in the Bay Area that, that came to me from another surveyor. So that's a lot, but <laughs> we'll get we'll go through it fairly quick. I'll try and keep it simple and uh, teach you something about building setbacks that are really important. So what is a building setback? A building setback is a distance, 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet. It's a distance that you have to set back your structures from the property line. So if you have a 10 foot side yard setback, you can't have your building any closer than 10 to the property line on the side of your, your uh, parcel than 10 feet. Uh, if you have a uh, 30 foot front yard setback, you can't have the front of your building any closer than 30 feet. So for example, my, my house in Stockton, I've got, I think, a four foot setback on the sides. I've got a 20, 25 foot setback on the front. And I've got a 10 or 20 foot setback in the, in the rear. And my house was located on the parcel to meet the setbacks as were all the other houses in my neighborhood. So if you drive down my street, you'll see there's a consistent distance or setback from the right of way line to the fronts of the garages. Okay. So that's what a building setback is. So why do land planners care about building setbacks? The, the main reason is because building setbacks affect the way a neighborhood looks visually. And that's something that, you know, land planners, especially in, in public practice, they care a lot about that. So they affect the, the look of the neighborhood, uh, how compact it feels, um, you know, how comfy it feels, you know, how, how tight the buildings are to this, to the public right away. And so that's, that's primarily why, uh, public land planners care about building setbacks. Now, there's some other very practical reasons why you want to care about building setbacks. So building setbacks can prevent fire damage. In, in some cases, they can prevent, prevent fires from spreading. They allow you practical access to maintain uh, the, the edges of your property, wall for, you know, to maintain walls and fences, other things, even buildings. Um, you can have parcels with zero setbacks, so the buildings are right on the property line, and that happens. In a lot of, a lot of urban areas, especially, you'll have, uh, product parcels with zero setback. And it, that can cause problems. You just, you have to exercise an extra degree of care and caution whenever you're doing anything, um, construction related on a parcel that has a zero, zero building setback. So that's why, you know, building setbacks are important. So, why do we care? You know, as a, as a property owner or real estate developer, uh, excuse me, a real estate investor or a land developer, uh, why do you care about building setbacks? Now, there's a couple reasons why building setbacks are important to you. Uh, one is they're going to be a, a major factor in determining the area of the parcel that can be built on. So it's what I call the buildable area. And we'll, we'll do another video where we talk about buildable area, and I'll, I'll get, go into more detail. But the setback is going to control how much of the parcel you have to actually do something with, especially when it, when it relates to a structure, right? And so in compact areas where buildings are very valuable on a square foot basis, the building setbacks are going to have a, a big uh, influence on the, how big of a building you can put on the parcel. There's other things that influence that. There's some, some cities have what they call floor to, uh, floor to areas ratios that, that can control building size, or they might have maximum building size limits. But in a lot of cases on a compact urban lot, setbacks are going to be one of the one of the most important things that controls how big your building can be. The other reason is that, that setbacks are important to uh, investors and land developers, landowners, is uh, violations of building setbacks can cause problems. Uh, they can cause you some headaches. 
So what kind of headaches can you get if you have a building that violates a setback? Uh, I'm going to give you three things, three kinds of problems or headaches you can get. One is you can get co code enforcement violations. So you can actually get cited for, for a code enforcement violation and, and you can have to take steps to rectify that. That can involve a lot line adjustment, a zoning variance, or actual mo the movement of a building, which is obviously very expensive. All of those things are not fun. So that's, that's one issue. Uh, you can, it can cause you problems when you go into, if you go in to get a use permit or, a zoning variance, or if you want to develop, you know, you want to subdivide, uh, the local agency in a lot of cases will make you rectify or correct any setbacks before they'll let you give you permission to do whatever it is you want to do. So there's land use issues there. And then finally, uh, if you have a building, especially a valuable building that violates a setback that can cause problems with title insurance, you might not be able to get the title insurance you want. You might not be able to get any, any title insurance, depending on the circumstances. Um, if you if you've got a building that violates setback, so all three of those things are headaches that can be caused by a building that violates a setback. That's why building setbacks are important, and that's why you want to know about building setbacks before you buy a particular piece of property. So, what are two main problems uh, with building setbacks? You know, why are building setbacks a challenge? And they are. They're building setbacks are a pain in the butt. Why is that? There's two main reasons. Why building setbacks are a pain in the butt. The first is it can be really expensive to, to determine the location of a building setback, and I'm going to explain why, but it's expensive to plot them on, on a parcel. And the second reason that, that building setbacks are a challenge is it can be difficult to interpret the code that define building, building setbacks. So the building setback that applies to a particular parcel or, or particular segment of a parcel boundary is not always clear. Uh, because the rules aren't always clear, and, and sometimes they can be interpreted in different ways. So for those two reasons, building setbacks are, are a challenge or kind of a pain in the butt. So what do you need to do to determine if a building violates a setback? So if you're going to buy a parcel and you want to know, are all the buildings in compliance with the setback? Oh, or if you just want to locate a setback on a parcel, you want to know what your buildable area is, what do you need to do? So you, you're going to need three things. To, to determine if you have a setback violation. Number one, you're going to need an accurate survey of the building. So you got to know exactly where the building is at. Number two, you need an accurate survey of the parcel boundary because those two things are going to be related. The building setback is typically an offset of the property line. And then third, you're going to need somebody to interpret the setback code that applies to your parcel. Okay, so let me just go over those three things again. If you want to understand if you've got a building setback violation, you need an accurate location of the building, you need an accurate location of the property line, and you need an interpretation of the setback code. So none of those three things are easy, and for sure the first two require a surveyor. So you need a surveyor to get an accurate building location and to resolve the location of the property line, and you should probably have a surveyor looking at the uh, the, muni the municipal code that defines your, your building setback. So. Why are setbacks hard to interpret? Let's talk about that for a couple minutes. I'm going to give you again three reasons uh, setbacks can be difficult to interpret. One is it's not always clear what's a side yard, what's a front yard, what's a rear yard. Uh, if you have a corner lot, are, are both those sides front yards? Is one of them a side yard? That can be a little bit tricky. Um, if you have a, an odd shaped parcel, you know, funky shaped parcel that's not a rectangle, it's not always clear. What's the front? What's the rear? And if you have a parcel that's on two streets, fronts two streets, is there a front? Is there a rear? So that can get tricky. Um, the, the second reason is you got to understand what part of the building you measure the setback to. Is it the drip line of the roof? Is it the concrete footing? Is it the face of the outside of the, of the wall? You know, the siding of the structure? Is it, you know, do you, do you include porches, canopies? Do you include, um, you know, utility? Appendages on the building, you know, most places it's the footing, but that's not always true. Different rules apply in different places, um, so you have to check that out. It's not always clear. And then finally, the third thing is it's not always clear what numeric value applies to the setback. So what is the building setback on a particular side of a parcel? That's not always clear, and I wanted to give you guys an example of that just so you can understand how hard this is. This comes from one of our cities in the Bay Area. And uh, it's a couple paragraphs of their zoning code that talks about the front setback. What is the front setback? 
And it, the answer is it depends. So they have what they call a contextual, put that in air quotes, a contextual front setback. And so I know this is boring, but I'm just going to read you this paragraph because it's a good illustration of how, how hard setbacks can be. So here's their code. This is, I lifted this right out of the code for the, one of their residential zones. This is for the front setback. It says the minimum front yard setback shall be the greater of 20 feet or the average setback. If the average front setback is 30 feet or more. Average setback means the average distance between the front property line and the first main structural element, including covered porches, on sites on the same side of the block, including existing structures on the subject parcel. This calculation shall exclude flag lots and existing multifamily developments of three units or more. For calculation purposes, if five or more properties on the block are counted, the single greatest and the single least setback shall be excluded. The street side yard setback of corner lots that have front, the front side of their parcel, the narrowest street face, facing lot line, facing another street shall be excluded from the calculations. For blocks longer than 600 feet, the average setback shall be based on the 10 sites located on the same side of the street and nearest to the subject property, plus the subject site, but for a distance no greater than 600 feet. Blocks with three or few par fewer parcels are not subject to conceptual setbacks. Structures on the site in no case may be located closer than 20 feet from the front property line. Wow. Try and figure that out. Like, that takes its own flowchart, <laughs> right? to try and figure out what just one setback, just the front setback is on that residential lot in this city. It That is a nightmare. Now, I'm not saying that I couldn't figure that out, but that is not something you're going to do in two minutes, right? Um, and that it's going to take, that's a fair amount of work to do that. So that's just an example. I've seen other setbacks based on street right-of-way widths, based on building heights, based on building types, based on Land use types, I mean, it's just, it, it can get crazy. So, here's some things I want you to remember about building setbacks. Number one, you need a surveyor to determine the location of a building setback. Can't do it without a surveyor. If you want to know the buildable area of your parcel and there's setbacks that apply, you need a land surveyor. Two, you need a land surveyor to understand if a building violates a setback. The only way to know that is to get a good survey of the property line and understand exactly where that building's at. Three, Building backs, uh, building setbacks are not always black and white. It's not always clear. They're not always certain. Building setbacks can be uncertain for, for a couple reasons, either because the location of the property line may be uncertain or because of ambiguities in the building setback code. And we talked about what some of those ambiguities can be. Don't confirm building setbacks without a good surveyor. Even if you're working with a land attorney, land attorneys are not expert measurement makers. Make sure that you've got a good land surveyor ball. Check building setbacks before you buy urban parcels.